Earlier, we looked at how a typical URD system is laid out, and we started looking at ways to identify and isolate problems that commonly affect URD systems. We focused on transformer faults in the previous segment. Now we're ready to turn our attention to cable faults. For the remainder of this program, we'll look at different ways to troubleshoot cable faults in a URD system. While the methods we'll focus on are commonly used at many utilities, they may not be exactly like the methods you use, so make sure you're familiar with the procedures used by your company. We'll start our discussion basically where we left off in the previous segment. You'll recall that something caused the fuse on one of the riser poles in the URD system to blow. A troubleshooter visually inspected the transformers on the loop, but couldn't find any visual evidence of a transformer fault. He didn't receive any additional information about what might be causing the problem from any of the customers on the loop either. With these considerations in mind, the troubleshooter suspects that the blown fuse on the riser pole was caused by a cable fault somewhere between the riser pole and the normally open point. The next step is to locate and isolate the section of cable where the fault is. The way to go about isolating a cable fault in a URD system often depends on the type of equipment in the system. For example, some utilities have devices known as fault indicators installed on the cables in a URD system. Fault indicators can make identifying a cable fault considerably easier. There are several types of cable fault indicators commonly used in URD systems. The type in this system consists of a relay and flag arrangement located within the transformer cover. With this type of indicator, the troubleshooter opens the transformer cover to see if the flag has tripped. A tripped flag indicates that a fault has occurred. Other types of fault indicators use a warning light or an audible alarm to indicate when a fault has occurred. But regardless of the type of indicator used, the basic function of all fault indicators is the same, to make it easier to identify a cable fault. Keep in mind, though, that even when a fault indicator is used, you still need to verify that the cable is faulted. Once a cable fault has been identified, the section of cable that's affected needs to be isolated so that power can be restored to the rest of the URD loop. One way to isolate a faulted cable is by lifting the load brake elbows on the ends of the cable from the feed-through bushings on the transformer and placing the elbows in standoffs on the transformers. When you do this, be sure to clearly mark both ends of the faulted cable with warning tags. The warning tags will alert anyone performing switching operations, and they'll help prevent the cables from being accidentally closed in. The tags will also make it easier for the repair crew to identify the isolated ends of the faulted cable.